Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Force here, and today we will be taking a look at 40 minutes of gameplay in the Firefall beta. Firefall is an upcoming class-based free-to-play MMO shooter that is being developed by Red5 Studios. The game has been in the beta for quite a while, and I've covered it in the past, but what I'm looking to do here in this video is show you 40 minutes of gameplay starting from the very beginning in character creation. So let's go ahead and get things started in the character creation screen. Alright, so the first thing I want to show you here are the battle frames. Battle frames are basically Firefall's versions of classes. There are five battle frames in the game. The first one is the Assault. Uh, this is your basic attacker. The second one is the Biotech, which is a healer class. The third one is Recon, which would be your sniper. The fourth one is the Engineer, and as you expect, Engineer, turrets, there you go. And then lastly, we've got the Dreadnought, which is basically your Heavy class. So most of the standard archetypes that you see in class-based shooters are covered here within these five battle frames. Now in the past, when I've taken a look at this game, I have played as the Assault battle frame. I think this time I'm going to try something different, and why don't we give the Engineer a shot? Okay, so there we go. So we've got the Engineer there, we've got a very dark backdrop, that's kind of scary. Uh, we're going to go ahead and enter the name with the lovely Force Lull, and then also you have the option of choosing between the different sexes, and you can also choose different voice types. Uh, whenever you say something within the game, like after getting a kill or something like that, you can just ch change the way that sounds. We're going to go with the basic Sarge there. Also a little bit of adjustment to skin tone, you can change from facial features, there's two styles available. Okay, and also choose eye colors. Let's give them green eyes. That's kind of creepy. A couple different hairstyles, and I guess we'll go with that one. And hair color, that's kind of neat, so why don't we stick with that. Give them some facial hair because it's super cool. All right, so there is our guy, Forslo. Let's go ahead and hop into the first 40 minutes of gameplay here in Firefall. All right, we'll be starting things off here by flying into the main town within the beta, which is known as Copacabana, and we're also going to be given a little bit of an introduction. for a vacation, but we need to pay the bills first. Let's see if we can find some work here. Coming into the city now? Hold on, I'll bring her out. Don't worry. Once we get hooked into Sin, I'll scan the local feed. We'll find something. All right, so that lady that was just speaking to us, uh, known as Arrow, she basically works as your tour guide. As you make your way through the game, she'll be updating you with points of interest, places you can find quests, and things like that. So get used to hearing her lovely voice. Okay, so the Shared Intelligence Network, also known as the SYN Network, uh, these are locations within major points of interest within the game map that you must link into in order to hook up to the quest system in that vicinity. Once again, this is a MMO. There is a quest system, there is leveling. All those things do exist. I do apologize for the little bit of choppiness. This is something that has been happening in the beta, unfortunately. Uh, definitely not running optimally at the moment, and that is stuff that we expect to pan out over time as well. Let's go ahead and hook into the SYN up link and get our quest for Copacabana. That's it, we're in. Now we can see all the traffic in this area and receive messages in Copacabana. Open up your map. See the circle around Copacabana? That's the range of this in tower. The more towers we find, the more of the map will uncover. I'm also directly patched into your sin feed. I can see what you see. Picking up an emergency transmission. Patching you in. Uh, this is Ratchet in Copacabana Engineering. Our water's been cut off. We need somebody to inspect the aqueduct valves that carry the water from the moisture farms. Can you help? We have to help them. The melting has destroyed all of the other moisture farms in this area. If this one goes down, Copacabana won't have any water. Ratchet, we're on it. Thanks, please hurry. All right, so as you saw there, right after we hooked up to the Sin uplink and they brought up the map just to display you, uh, the Sin uplink located right here in the center of the town. We were then granted vision to this general vicinity, and as such, you also get access to the local quest. They'll just be sort of patched into your feed, and there'll be that little dialogue as you saw there. Uh, now, as you can see, a lot of this map is displayed already. I have to say, when I first played the game, this was not the case. None of these Sin uplinks were unlocked and displayed, but since I have played the game already, I'm assuming that that's why these are currently 
up and visible, but basically the map would be entirely this grayed out value. The purple area is actually areas that you cannot currently go to in the beta that will be unlocked in the future. But these grayed out areas is basically what the entire map was covered with, and then after hooking into a sin up link, you would unlock that visual area around it. So again, I'm not sure if this is just new the way they're doing it with these sin up links, making them defaultly available, or if it's because I've already played. I'm assuming it's the latter. We have gotten our first quest though, it is pinned on the map. You can also see it on the overhead as you're playing the game. And what we're going to do is take this little transport system to get over there. Let me just say, as I mentioned prior, uh, I have covered Firefall before. I have really found myself enjoying this game as I go back to it time and time again. And I am going to be doing this first 40 video as if it's your first time seeing Firefall. I'm gonna go over all the basics. So if you know all the basics of Firefall, maybe this isn't gonna be the video for you, but keep in mind, I do plan to continue to cover Firefall again in the future. So we're gonna be taking this little launch pad here. What this does is it's, it's, the, it's the transportation system in Firefall. It's a different take on, you know, taking like a griffin from point A to point B or taking a fast travel system. This actually jettisons you up in the air and then by hitting spacebar you unlock these gliders and then you can glide wherever you are able to reach. There's also updrafts that allow you to glide further, uh, not in this particular area though. So we're going to glide right on over to these water valves, which is our first quest here in Copacabana. I'm going to make my way right down to here, try to get myself to a little bit of a safe spot. Alright, so we've got some water valves right there that we need to go interact with. Now, unfortunately, what you see all those sacks around there, uh, those are Arana sacks, and bugs will pop out when I walk near them. So, preemptively, knowing that that's going to happen, I'm going to set myself up with some turrets. Again, I'm playing as the engineer class. As the engineer, you start off with some turrets. If you look at the bottom center of the screen, you're going to notice a few things displayed. On the left-hand side, that 1200 number, that's a representation of my health. In the center, that shows my active abilities or items that I can use. Currently, I just have number one hotkey to, to deploy turrets. And then to the right of that, that's a display of your ammo. I've got two weapon types to start off with. I have got a basic rifle here, an assault rifle, and I also have a Tesla rifle. So those are my options currently. I can play in first person as well as third person. I just generally prefer to play this game in third person, but you can play it as an FPS if you so desire. So let's go ahead and set up some turrets here. I can deploy three of them and I will do that very thing. And then we're gonna take these out right here because otherwise they're just gonna come when I try to go to the quest. So we're gonna get deal with these bugs here. Let my turrets do some work. I can also repair my turrets here with my Tesla rifle. So we're gonna do that. I'm taking some damage though. I'm gonna back up here for a minute. Okay, so repair the turrets. Let them do their business. You can also do some damage to that guy. There we go. Okay, so area cleared. Let's go ahead and do our quest. Uh, quest items will be highlighted in that little bluish stuff there, as you see. There's some more bugs over here. Thank you. Oh, these bugs just keep coming. Oh gosh, my my damn things are too effective. Uh oh, we've engaged a large bad bug. <laughs> that is not what I intended to do, but he is here. Our turrets have engaged him. All right, we're gonna try to ignore him. So the quest areas are gonna be highlighted again with this little blue digital looking stuff. Watch out. Oh my that lord. There we go. Hurry, see if you can shut, it off. shut the valve and then try to deal with the crazy bug. Whew. Okay, well, that's not exactly <laughs> what I'd hoped it would have happened, but yes, uh, unfortunately, my turrets decided to engage that huge guy right in the middle of our quest. What we did was we went up to this valve, it exploded, we then shut it down. They then told us we need to kill some Aranas. Now, you can see your currently available quest, or the ones that you're currently on, by hitting N. That's going to bring up your notifications. And uh, this quest is for me to kill Aranas. I actually have to kill 0 out of 20 Aranas that is displayed on the bottom right, if you can see that there. Unfortunately, the text is kind of light. There we go, should be easier to see now. So yes, I have to kill 20 Aranas now, which are those bug things that we were taking care of prior. Alright, so we've got those. Uh, I am unfortunately a little low on health. Let me see if there are any health regen stations right up here. And while I look for that, I will also divert your attention to a couple of other things. I've got a mini-map on the lower left-hand corner, which will show various points of interest. Also, on the upper left-hand corner, you've got my name, my character name, as well as my XP. So in doing quests and in killing things, you, uh, you do 
acquire XP, and then you use that XP to actually unlock various skills, abilities, and weapons in your tech tree. We'll look at that tech tree later on. It doesn't look... Oh, you know what? There's going to be some right up here. All right, what am I doing? Should be some health regen right up here. Oop, just missed it. Not enough jetpacks. Yes, jetpacks. Okay, I can't believe I haven't even mentioned it. Jetpacks are in this game, and they are awesome. Uh, different types depending on the battle frame that you're using. My guy actually thrusts through his boots. Some people have legitimate backpacks. Okay, so we've got some ammo and health regen. These are found in major cities as well as scattered throughout the world. There's also a few uh, interesting things in here that we could take a look at, but we're going to hold off on that for now as we go and go to the Arana nest and try to kill some Aranas to complete this quest. Let's take this launch pad. Try to find some more Arana nests. Okay, we've got a few over here. And uh, I must then find a good spot to set up my turrets. And we can take out... Yeah, this is going to be really good, actually. I'm going to put one right here. Oh, that went further than I expected it to. That's fine. Okay. I'm going to kill these guys. Try to keep my turrets repaired as much as possible. I wonder if I can sit up here now. Uh, it's probably suicide to go down here. There. We have to thin them out. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna mass repair my turrets and let them do the work, huh? How's that sound? Oh, the joys of engineering, or of being an engineer. Now, luckily, my Tesla rifle not only repairs, but it also does damage, so I can sort of bounce in between the two. And the great thing is that repairing doesn't use ammunition; it's only the uh, damage dealing rifle that does. Look at that, got 15 out of 20 just by this little location here, setting up some turrets up high. Gotta love it. Gonna run down and collect some of the things that they've dropped. Uh, upon killing enemies, they're gonna drop a couple of things. They will drop ammunitions, they will drop health packs, they will also drop various resources. You collect different types of resources. What the heck, just launched a giant explosion. You collect different types of resources to do this game's crafting, or manufacturing as it's called here in Firefall. I think we almost have them all. I'm gonna actually pop this egg. These guys will pull back to me. And then uh, we can get my turrets to finish them off. I have to say, uh, Engineer is pretty awesome. <laughs> like I said in prior videos, I had primarily done the Assault class, but uh, this Engineer is kind of cool, to be honest. And we are just about finished. This last little egg will be the last of them. Kill this guy. All right. Meet me in Copacabana. You've taken care of the Aranas, but we still got to get that water flowing. I've got a plan. Objective complete. Now we go back to Copacabana, which is right over here. Let's make our way over. So I've acquired XP. I don't believe I have enough to skill up yet. Uh, I'm gonna wait till we break. I think two or three thousand before we look at the skill tree system. Collect some ammo and health right here in town. Once again, those little those little pads are scattered all throughout major cities as well as throughout the game. There's also ways you can call down healing abilities and stuff like that. That's another option within the game. Alright, let's turn in our quest here with Ratchet. What is this guy doing? We're gonna go to the silica deposits over here. Use the call down menu on your nav wheel to access the sonic detonators. It contains things you picked up for special missions, like them detonators. Okay, so call down menu can be used to call down thumpers, which is the resource gathering in this game, which we'll be taking a look at later in the video. It is also used to call in mission stuff. So for this mission, if I hit C, I'll bring up the call down menu. For this mission, I have these low velocity bombs here. Uh, these sonic detonators, which will be used to blow up these. Again, uh, quest area is clearly displayed with that little digital wave there. And that explosion did not animate properly. Welcome to beta. <laughs> I can't believe the Aegis is still 
All right, we're gonna get these here. Throw the detonators. There you go. Goodbye, Earth. All right, so we just need to collect 10 of these silicate fragments by throwing these grenades. Now you can see upon picking up that item down, the, down at the bottom, not only do I have the turrets available, but hitting four is what is deploying these specialty item grenades. So as you get new abilities and stuff, uh, that will fill up that bottom row. I believe it is a max of four. That could be incorrect. I know that different loadout types or different, uh, different armor types allow you to carry more or less sort of trade-off system can have more abilities or more effectiveness, stuff like that. I assume at the high, high end eventually it'll just be, you know, you'll, you'll have the max available abilities plus just awesome equipment. Collect more silicate fragments. I'm gonna continue to go over here. If you're wondering what those chosen draw pods are, those are sort of invasion points. Uh, the chosen are an alien race that is invading our civilization and they'll drop down and they'll invade and they'll, they'll, they can actually take over towns and there'll be a struggle back and forth uh, as you try to take back your towns to acquire the benefits from that town such as ammunition deposits and stuff like that uh, but we're not going to look at that now we're just going to continue along our quest okay so that's exploded these ones over here we found another one just a couple more I don't know about you guys, but I think this game is absolutely beautiful. I, I love the aesthetic of this game. I just, I, I keep finding myself, every time I pick this game back up, I, I, I'm reminded, wow, this is a lot of fun. This is really, really enjoyable. And I'm really excited to see because they have not, this game is not fully fledged out yet. It's not fully featured. Again, it is just in the beta. And once that happens, I can't wait. I'm excited. All right. We have all the fragments we need. Now back this to town. Ratchet to rebuild the MPU and get the water flowing to Copacabana. Let's go find Ratchet. And so as you can see, the quest system is a lot like standard MMOs. And now I acquired the quest not by speaking to NPCs. Again, it was by hooking up to the Synop link. But it's kill stuff. It's collect stuff. It's the basics. But that's okay with me, to be honest. Hey, you found them all. Bring them over, and I'll show you how you can build the MPU. Beauty. Use the molecular printer over there, and I'll show you how to put it together. Bet you've never used an Omnidyne M jet before. And with the silicates you found, you'll be able to construct a replacement MPU by printing molecules layer by layer. Load the manufacturing station with the MPU template. It should take only a matter of seconds until it's built and ready to unload. Okay, so this is the manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing in this game, and you can see that a core soldier right now, he's telling me about chosen patrols. Uh, chosen patrols, again, that thing that we saw on the map. You've got the chosen draw pad over there. Uh, that, that's being taken over by chosen as well. A few chosen, so these are just little invasion points where those chosen are. Uh, so here we are at a manufacturing station here. And this is the crafting within the game. Now, as I mentioned, when you kill enemies, you, you pick up resources. There's also a system called thumping, which we'll see near the end of this video, that allows you to acquire resources as well. You can also get resources by PvPing. So if I hit inventory here, I can show you, all right, these are the resources I've collected so far. All sorts of different resource types. Ferrite, Coralite there, Quartzite, Silicate, and Cristite. So these are the different resource types that you get in the game. You use those resources to construct things at the most basic levels, make it as simple as possible. I use these resources that I've collected from PvPing or from thumping or from killing things to then build things, build items and attachments, modifications, stuff like that right here in the manufacturing station. And you do that, you've got a few loadouts. I don't know if that worked quite the way I wanted it to. There we go. You've got a few uh, loadouts available. There's a total of four slots right here, although only the first two are unlocked at the moment. I don't have access to those. And I have built my basic MPU, that finished building. But before we unload that, let me just show you. So you'd go to load, and then you'll be presented with a list of nanoprints. Nanoprints are recipes. And you then click on these items, and you see, hey, do I have enough of the necessary resource to build this? 
and it's that simple. So if I wanted to make some uh, small health packs, I could do that. You can see I've got enough Christite. I, I, I have 116, I require 75, so I could build some small health packs, and this would then become a call down, which in the middle of battle, I could call down a health packs and heal up a little bit. So these are consumables that you can build, uh, thumpers, thumper beacons, components that you can build to, to build processor things, and there's also refining and resource blending, sort of a combination system, if you will. So th this is, uh, it, it is, it, at first it was kind of confusing to me when I first looked at the system, like, wait, how is this, what is all this doing? But, you know, if the easiest way to think about it is nanoprints or recipes, you just click on the recipe, see, do I have the necessary resources? If not, how do I acquire these resources? Do I have to go gather them? Do I have to do refining to get them? Is that going to be something that's necessary? Like, how exactly do I go about getting this? Do I need to make some manufacturing components? It's that. It is really pretty simple. Uh, it's just at first it was kind of overwhelming when I first saw the system, but it, it, it's just pretty basic, makes a lot of sense. So let's exit out of that, and then we're going to continue our quest here by unloading this basic MPU. And bingo, Bob's your uncle. It's done. We'll need to take this to the master valve station and install it. It'll propagate the changes to the other valves via SYN, and everything should be fixed up. Careful though, the installation creates quite a racket, likely to attract the undesirables. Okay, so next in our quest chain here is to go to the main aqueduct station to install the MPU. However, I do believe we have enough XP to check out the skill system. Now, let me just confirm that though before we go any further by hitting T. Here you can view all of the available no, we do not. for your battle friend. Select an Accord Tech license to view more information and unlock it with the experience you've accumulated. Okay, so for the first level here in my Engineer Battle Frame, the Engineer class, I actually need 3200 XP to get any one of these. But since we have this open, let's just take a look at it. So what you do is you can un unlock these uh, different abilities or items, and you make your way along this tree. As you can see, it's all bracketed, so you need to get this before you can get that, you need to get this before you can get that, etc., etc. And then you work your way down by, again, gaining XP, spending that XP on these items or, uh, or special bonuses, until you eventually get all the way down here, at which point you can specialize in one of these two engineer types, the engineer specializations. Uh, the first one here is the electron, the second one here is the bastion. And then beyond that, it branches even further. So you can see here's a general overview. This is the first tier right now. This is all of this right here is within that first tier. And then it specializes into these two tiers. And you can take a look at that. Those tiers provide a whole new slew of different abilities or weapons or items that you can get. And then it goes even further down the list and further. There's more coming soon, uh, not currently available, but pretty neat, huh? This is a pretty interesting take on a skill system uh, within this game. And I think that there's so much specialization that's going to come with this. It'll really make it so that different engineer battle frames will, can be vastly different depending on not only what things you decide to get within your first tier, but what tiers you decide to specialize in and then you go even further than that it's pretty cool I, I really like this system and there's a system set up just like this for all the other other battle frames within the game and remember each one of these tiers here these specializations have their own full list of things that you can go through and select and these are different weapons these are different items these are different abilities it's a, it's a multitude of things all right so let's go ahead and exit that though because once again we don't have enough resources at the moment but once we do we'll go ahead and pick up our first tier and then go from there for now, let's go to the main aqueduct station and do our quest. Let me show you this right here, actually. That right there, a wrecked resupply station. If I repair that by running up to it and holding E, I can get resupply from that position. Uh, I don't know that I really want to do that right now, though, because I don't feel like popping all those eggs, which is basically what would happen. So I'm going to come down here. And I wonder if this person is on the quest as well. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just help him. Uh, let's go ahead and set up some turrets. Yeah, I know. I'm taking my sweet time to help him. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I don't know how far along the quest he is. Or... Oh, I wonder if I just... Huh. I wonder if I get... If he, Oh wow, yeah. Oh wow, it's working for me too. Okay, great. I, uh, I accept. 
So he started it, but since I'm in the vicinity, it is working for me. Well, that is good to know. That makes me actually really happy. I'm gonna try to repair these and try to keep them up as long as possible. So that is what we're protecting. Now I would have had to run up there and hit E to start installing, but since someone here was already doing it, it was taken care of. And we are helping him. And ourselves. Oh, shit. Got one of my turrets. Great. Mission complete. We have uh, we have acquired enough XP to unlock our first skill. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go to a safe place here. Let's make sure I'm protected. Dropping a couple turrets, and then we will hit T, which will bring up our skill tree. And of course, the second I do that, someone comes. So let's take care of these guys. Thank you. <laughs> we will hit T again. <laughs> All right, so we now have an ex enough XP to select one of this first tier. So let's take a look at what we have for options. Quick Deploy Shield, a self-deploying force field. There's also a ton of flavor text with it as well. I'm not going to read through all that, though. Uh, you get the basics just by getting the general gist here. Uh, right here, we've got the Jump Jets, Recharge Jet Energy Faster, allowing for more frequent jet use. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we've got a Deployable Mine that damages and incapacitates. Oh, I kind of like that. So why don't we go ahead and... Grab that. The other reason. Looks like you've earned a great upgrade. Yes. To take advantage of your new gear, head to the nearest garage terminal to modify your battle frame. Okay, so before we can actually get this, we do have to go to a garage terminal, as Arrow just said. Uh, the other reason that I went, went, went for this one is because it also allows me in my next level to unlock a better turret. And turrets are kind of what I'm going to focus on, although there's a turret over here as well, but whatever. Uh, this is the one that I'm going for right at this very moment. So, we have to go to a battle frame garage. Now, you can do that by going to the major town of Copacabana. There are also outposts throughout the world, like, for example, the one that we saw over here originally in the early part of the video, when and we regain some health and ammo. And these outposts also have the battle frame garages that allow you to switch out. Now, this is where you can go to switch out the gear that you're wearing, the different equipment, the different abilities. So let's go over here. And I think it's up one level. Yes. Okay, so wonderful, here we are. We've got all the basics here available to us. We've got the Battle Frame Garage, also is a new use station as well as a Battle Frame Station. Battle Frame Station, on one individual character, so I've got my Force Lull dude here, uh, and he's currently the Engineer Battle Frame. But you can purchase additional Battle Frames to have access to them on your main character. So it's, it's the Battle Frames that you level up, and not so much the character. So I can be, you know, say I was like a level, level 10 or 15 Engineer. I've been playing for the Engineer for a while, and I decided, hey, I want to try out the Dreadnought or the Heavy class. I could switch to the Dreadnought Battle Frame here on my main character, but the Battle Frame would be level 1. My character would still be, you know, whatever. He still has the experience that he has, and he still has that Engineer Battle Frame available at a higher level. But you can stay on one character without having to log out and log back in and have multiple Battle Frames if you so desire. All right, now we're going to go to the Battle Frame Garage, and this is where we can equip the newly unlocked ability. And you've got access to a few different things here. Different parts of the body are going to have different things. Like for example, this one right here has access to my secondary and primary weapon, or signature and secondary weapon, as well as the different ammunitions. 
but we don't have anything new for that. What we do want to go to is right here. Oh. What is it right here? Not the reactor. I'm sorry. Right there. The chest right there gives you access to plating, specialty, processor, and the abilities. That's the one we want to look at. So our ability one is currently the mini turret. The ability two is unbound. We're going to go to ability two and then click on the accord short circuit. And now we have access to that. So the mine is now available. And different equipments. As you unlock new equipments, you can go here to add them to your character as well as the weapons like we took a look at down here, uh, servos as well as jump jets, the ability to jump uh, higher and as well as the ability to thrust longer. And this is also where you purchase new battle frames. You can see on the left hand side, here's my engineer battle frame for 1000 Christite, which is the resource down here. I only have 179 of it. I can purchase a new battle frame and you can see you have two available that you can unlock right away. Plus you can purchase this battle frame right here. That purchase ability is with real money. Again, this is a free-to-play game. There is the ability to buy things. It's said not to be the ability to buy power, but the ability to buy convenience is what they say. Who knows if that'll turn out to be true? I believe them, though. All right, so our number two is now balanced. We've got this little mine here that we can deploy. It's sort of like a claymore. Kind of cool. Yeah. And now let's go continue along with the next part of our quest. Take our little glider pad here. Sometimes it just drops you right to the ground, and that frustrates me to no end. I I did I was not trying to face plant him into the ground, I promise you. It just happens sometimes. <laughs> right, so we're going to go back up here, we will replenish our health, and I will give that another go. There we go. Too bad I didn't get that high that time. Whatever. At least I can glide a little bit. You have to be going down. If you try to go up, you'll lose wind and you'll just kind of drop right down like that. It is gliding in the basic sense. There are updrafts in certain parts of the world that allow you to uh, take advantage of a well, well of the updraft to glide even further. Oh gosh, stay away from me, bugs. I'm trying to go do my quest. Oh, what the heck? How did that? What the heck was that? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to go to these uh, various areas. We've got the spawning pools, hisser burrows, and thresher nests. Looks like spawning pools are the closest, so that is where we will be going first. We're in the right spot. He must be close. What are those bubbles coming from the pools? Let's investigate. Ah, another one, and another. Get out of here. TFO. Okay, so I have to investigate those areas over there. Hate you. Hate you too. I have to investigate those areas over there. There's a health pack right here. Let me grab that. And I'm try to find a good spot for my turrets. Why don't we go with right up here? This is a core copa control. Heads up. I put one right here. One right here, and one over here. Okay, so I've got a little bit of protection. Uh, let's clear out before we do the quest part of this. Clear out any bugs that may be. I always, when any one of these quests that I come up to, I always feel like setting up first because sometimes you'll just get overwhelmed with Aranas. All right, so let's go ahead and go here, see what this is about. Okay, giant bug. Our turrets from here. My turrets are doing fine. My turret's gonna attack this thing though? What are you guys doing? Come on. Thank you. Alright, one of three title predators, so I need to kill two more. It's like just walking over these quest areas is what does it. Gosh, I love the engineer. This is such a cool class. Oh boy. I don't know how this thing would work in PvP having to rely. Seemingly, if you have the power of these turrets, you sort of have to rely on them, right? And so without them, it might be difficult. 
So I could see this being troublesome in PvP, but I don't really know. I have not PvP'd with the Engineer at all. In fact, I haven't PvP'd in Firefall in months. Uh, I, I was PvPing with Assault quite some time ago. Any more repairs needed? No, these guys are doing pretty good. Alright, so this area is taken care of. Time to move over to the next. Uh, it's gonna be the Hissar Burrows over here. And this is sort of how the game is structured, you know, and this is all, we're, we are just within Copacabana. We are just doing the quest system from Copacabana. That is it, uh, which is right over here. It's extending us a little bit further, but there are other quest hubs within this game. I think the next major one is the Trans Hub Command, and it'll give you another chain of quests, and then you continue along, and eventually the rest of this area will be unlocked, and then obviously more and more as we get closer to the release of the game, and then the final, final release. It's a, sort of a quest chain, and it's story-driven. PvP is also another big, big aspect of this game. In fact, they're focusing on esports, believe it or not. How much of an esports game this can be, I don't know. But it's fun, so I would I would like this game to succeed. I would like Red 5 Studios to do very well with this title. I think that this is actually a really awesome game. And that's probably the reason I've covered it multiple times on the channel. It's probably the reason I'm doing a brand new video. Oh, damn you. He escaped. Alright, well, I'm trying to find a good spot where I can have access to multiple hisser, hisser burrows. Um, back there might be good. Uh, that's a thresher right there. Alright. All right, let's go ahead and just set it up right here. I'm just going to set it up on the ground. Forget all this fancy shenanigans here. Now, let's go ahead and set three up right here. Damn it, this guy's on the same quest. All right, you know what? I think I just need to unlock those things, so I'm just gonna go. There we go. And my turrets are still good. And we have two done, so we just need to get a third here. Frick, it's freaking volt. It's like a hydralisk. <laughs> See this thing? This guy's like a hydralisk. Not that one. I'll show you the Hydra. Where'd he go? I really want to show you the Hydra. He must be dead. I don't know. We got a uh, last hisser bro right here. There we go. Alright. I'm gonna kill these guys first though. Get some XP. Why not? Oh my lord! Don't die in the process, please. No! Lost one turret. Not a problem, I can just redeploy one, but. Health regen there, thank you. All right, great, wonderful, good. Let's go ahead and go to the last part of this quest here with the Thresher Nest. Chosen drop pod over there, not today, no thank you. That Accord soldier will continue to tell me about Chosen Patrols in the area. Just over and over and over again. It actually gets kind of annoying. Um, I don't... It, it's con it's consistently happening. And you, and you might say, well, Force, why don't you just go to the Chosen Patrols? You don't understand. These are happening all the time. Chosen Patrols are just one after the other after the other. Uh, so it's not like, oh, let me just do it and it'll go away. No, it doesn't really work like that. I'm gonna try to go to a nice safe area where they can't reach. And we're gonna set up some turrets right up high. And then we're gonna laugh at these guys. I don't even think they have any range. And the glory. Oh, that guy has a range. Let's kill him. Spitting pressure. Get some health down there, too. We'll go get that soon. spitting. Ok, 
Okay. Let's get some health. Get some ammo. He's gonna charge me now that I'm on the ground. Oh, died too fast. How sad. Alright, let's uh, do our quest now. We have to go to the Stumper cores and search them. Again, nice and easy to see where they are. They're all highlighted. Digital wave. And we've got a couple over here too. Oh, resource. Thank you. And we've got some Christite on the ground over here. So pick that up. And two more. The last one. And that's that. Alright, so the last thing we're going to take a look at in this game is the thumping. I mentioned prior that this is something we were going to look at. This is a huge aspect of Firefall. It is the entire resource gathering system. And actually pretty cool that this is happening as uh, as we're getting to night here. What a perfect, what a perfect way to end this video, huh? Alright, so let's go ahead and take this glide pad. Hopefully it doesn't just drop me straight down. God damn it. It is so annoying, I don't know what causes that, but it happens and it frustrates me. I'm gonna try one more time to glide, and if I go crashing face first into the ground again, all you're supposed to do is it launches you up and you hit spacebar and you're supposed to start gliding, but sometimes it just shoots you straight to the freaking floor. There we go, all right. So let's go to this thumping location. And what we'll do is we're going to be using the scan hammer. A scan hammer is a hammer that you thump the ground with, that you hit the ground with, and it scans the location for resources. Once you find a resource laid in area, you then call down a thumper, and you must protect that thumper as it gathers resources. There you go. Pretty basic, huh? So you can see this guy over here. He's done. When you find a mineral node with your hammer, use the thumper beacon to call it down. The thumper will automatically start digging up those resources and storing them up. There's just one thing you need to know about thumping. I don't know if I can do this one. But I'm gonna help him anyways. So make sure to keep it guarded for Rana or anything worse. Be shopping for a Let's give him a hand. Alright, so we're gonna give him a hand. This is a thumper. You call it down, which you didn't get to see me do. Uh, he has his uh this guy who was here before me had already called one down. But the way this works is you hit the ground and you look for resource areas. It'll tell you uh, there's a, this much percentage to get this type of resource or this high of a yield at this location. And then the stumper comes down from the sky and it starts gathering resources from the ground. You can see there's a capacity and an integrity. So the integrity is its health. You have to make sure that that doesn't get to zero. And its capacity is how much of a resource it is carrying. The more you have, the higher yield you're going to get in return. You know, I don't think that I'm getting, I don't think this is counting for me, so I actually do think I'm going to leave, but they've got my turrets to help them. So good for them. Alright, so we're going to go here. I'm going to continue to move and try to find a thumpable surface. Let's go ahead and move in this direction. I just, I don't believe that I was getting resource, uh, I don't believe that was counting towards my quest because as, as you saw there it says, you know, I, I guess it doesn't really matter if it's not counting towards my quest, honestly. Just the sake of showing you guys, <laughs> so I'll go back to help. So yeah, we call down these thumpers, it's got integrity, it's got a percentage uh, capacity that's being filled, and you just want to make sure that that 
Gets as close to 100 as, as you can possibly get before it dies. If you get it all the way up to 100, that is the best possible situation that you can be in. And then doing this will acquire resources for you. Let me, let me see if I can call down... See if it's going to let me call it down. Here. With him. Okay, ready? Here we go. No, it's not gonna let me call it down because there's one nearby. But that's what I would that's what I would be doing if I could call it down. And then it goes up to hundred, and then you launch it back into space. But once again, this is not gonna count for us, unfortunately. At least I don't believe so. See, this guy's also trying to do the same thing. And I get to 100, and then you go up to it, launch it back into space, and ta-da! There you go. You guys are freaking out over that bug. It's really funny. And that's that. That is how thumping works in the game. Why is this guy yelling at me? <laughs> Alright guys, I think that's going to do it. What a strange ending. Uh, but hopefully you guys understand kind of what's going on. So again, you can call down these thumpers. Oh, there we go. So I can call down this thumper. It'll gather. It'll do the exact same thing that you just saw. And you just want to make sure you don't get hit by it either. Because it comes down crashing and it can hurt. You will die if you're standing next to it. And then we'll start thumping. But you don't need to hear it through the 100%. That's going to do it for our first 40 video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at the Firefall beta. Uh, definitely plan to stay tuned for more Firefall coverage in the future. I just love this game. I really, really do. I highly recommend you guys try to check this game out if you have any access. Uh, check out the Firefall website. I know they are consistently giving out beta keys. That can be a good way to do it. I'm sure there's giveaways going on as well. I don't have anything personally going on in terms of giveaways, but... If I do, I'll let you guys know. Otherwise, do what you can to check out this game or wait till it's full release. It will be free to play when it comes out. There is a cash shop in the game. It is for convenience, not for power, so they say. We'll find out. Thanks again for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.